Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk Bulldog golf. And with us, head coach Kyle Wittenbach. And coach, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Obviously, uh, your season uh, has been well underway since uh, since the fall. Uh, both the men's and women's teams in action, and now preparing for the GLIAC championships this coming weekend. Yeah, we just got to get that snow to melt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've been pretty busy and traveling a lot on the road lately, and um, staying in as good a weather as we can. This spring's actually been a lot better weather-wise than the last two, believe it or not, even though it's still been quite cold. But um, the men's team is peaking at the right time, and we're excited to, to play this weekend. You talk about the men's team. Obviously, uh, they've had a strong spring and, and won a couple tournaments. Uh, most recently, the Indianapolis Invitational just earlier yeah. last week. Yeah, that was a really big win. Kind of a statement win. And, and this, the region this year is very, very strong. We've got a lot of teams that, um, probably seven or eight, that whenever they get hot can just light the field up. But um, we showed this weekend that we're not only one of those teams that can do it more than once in, you know, in a spring, but when we do it, it was, it was a statement win. I mean, se winning a tournament by 17 shots in a field that good um, felt really good for me, felt really good for the guys, and it gave them all the confidence that they need going into this weekend. Earlier this spring, uh, you won the Saginaw Valley State Invitational as well and uh, had one of the, the best rounds ever uh, in terms of the Midwest region. Yeah. Um, until the next week when another team shot 274. <laughs> the 276 we shot, 12 under, um, is the second lowest round that I'm aware of in Ferris State history. It went through all the, um, the record books, but that was pretty exciting. And then the tournament that we had at, in Indianapolis, that was those three rounds cumulative was one of the lowest tournaments that we've ever had. So, And the conditions weren't super easy. It was windy and not super warm. So uh, it was cool to see them go out there and, and compete like that. And this is a team that for the last two years I've really done my best job of making sure that we get a lot of senior leadership and a lot of experience and and hopefully that's what's showing now um, all that senior leadership that's a huge thing I always told tell people if I could have four 29 year olds on my team we'd win the national championship <laughs> every year so the older the player the better it seems like in golf obviously these uh, seniors uh, that you're talking about this year guys that have uh, some championship experience played on uh, that team uh, that went went so deep in the NCAA tournament just uh, a couple years ago yeah so our lineup at the Greyhound Invitational the Indianapolis tournament um, four of those players all played in the national championship two years ago and our and the fifth player is a freshman who is had an, has a tremendous year it looks like he'll be Gliet freshman of the year uh, so that'll be a really good award for him and, and for his team but um, that's a great core of guys, right? Four guys that have played and seen the highest level. Uh, and we ended up losing two, two years ago to the um, national champion of the year, so uh, in the match play portion. So that was really cool to, to bring all those guys back, and now we're going to make another run. Obviously, on the women's side, a young lineup as you continue to get ready for the, the GLIAC championships this coming weekend, and both the men's and women's teams uh, in action here on the same weekend. That's right. So we start our practice run on Thursday. It's a different format this year, so we're going to do 18 holes of stroke play on Friday and Saturday for a 36-hole total, and that's going to qualify the top four teams out of the conference. There's uh, 10 women's teams and 11 men's teams in the conference, and those top four teams will play on Sunday in a match play f team sort of um, event that we call head-to-head -head metal play, and uh, that's how we're going to determine our conference championship this year. That's different than we've done it in the past. It's always been a 54-hole event, um, but the national championship does this format. They do it with another round of stroke play, but we've condensed it and made it as um, to make it resemble the national championship as best as possible and, and give those kids a really cool team experience because one of the challenges in, in college golf is, is creating a real positive team atmosphere as opposed to having you know five individuals play for a, co a cause. Have them really play together and, and make that really successful and fun and produce a good champion. Obviously, uh, you mentioned the, the team versus the individual. Uh, you've had not only a couple team champions, but a couple individual medalists uh, here along the, the way this spring as well, and a couple uh, veteran seniors in Jack Weller and Andrew Hammett. Yeah, so I think this year total, if you add the spring up with the fall, I think we've had five individual champions in our nine events. So like that's pretty impressive. I'm um, really happy for those guys. And yeah, like you said, that senior leadership is, is something that you can't teach. And um, when you have it, you definitely have an advantage. Going into the GLIAC Championships this weekend, what do you know about uh, the location, Augusta, Michigan, and, and obviously the course and uh, the conditions that you may face this weekend? Yeah, so the men play down at Bed Bedford Valley and the women are playing at Stonehenge South. They're both Gull Lakeview properties. So we're all staying at the same site, and then but they're only about 15 minutes apart, and they stagger the tee, so I'm able to coach both um, as fully as possible. But Bedford Valley, I've recruited there many times over the years. They host state championships there quite often, and 
Haven't seen Stonehenge South yet, but I've heard it's a really good place as well. And we'll see it all Thursday, get it ch uh, charted out, mapped out, and prepare the kids to play on Friday. Obviously, uh, with some rain maybe in the forecast, not only uh, will they have to battle a tough course, maybe maybe some elements as well that uh, often play into it uh, here during the spring. Yeah, hopefully. We always pray for worse conditions and, and the worst weather possible just because, um, like Tony was saying earlier, the tougher it is, the, the better my kids are and, and the more they want to compete. So they know that they can handle those adverse conditions and um, better than maybe say their competition and and so when it I mean, forecasted it's forecasted for rain or wind or cold or whatever it may be um, they know that that just improves their chances to, to win and play well that week so we'll Ob take it as it comes obviously uh, along with uh, the season you've had uh, some changes at khaki golf course with the construction of the new michigan golf hall of fame maybe talk about that facility and what that means for your program yeah i mean that's been huge so that opened up in march right when we were starting our indoor training for the season so we've been able to get in there and practice and, and prepare for all these events and then obviously when we come back from playing a tournament outside you know we come back to the cold conditions and the course hasn't been open yet in march anyway and uh it's been a huge help to be able to go in there and work on stuff, see all the numbers that, you know, our different technologies, you know, can teach us and um, just keep them swinging. Keeping them swinging is good and being able to give them some sort of feedback in terms of the ball flight technology that we use. Um, I mean, that's really huge and it just keeps their morale high and keeps them trucking along. Obviously, the men's team uh, going into the GLIAC championships also ranked uh, among the top teams in the region. Uh, maybe talk about the, the forecast going uh, from the conference championship into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, so um, there's about 32 teams in our region. The top 10 every year qualify for the regional, where we play the top 10 teams from the other region, which is south of us. Um, and of those 20 teams in the regional, the top six this year actually go on to the national championship based on last year's performance. So um, we're currently ranked fourth in, the, in our region, so we're locked into playing in the NCAA regional. Um, and so this weekend is you know playing for the conference title and, and that honor. And then two weeks after that, we'll go down to Arkansas and play in that NCAA regional where the top six go to the national championship. So that's been our goal from the beginning, and we're really looking forward to that tournament. But we've got some work to do this weekend first. Obviously a, a tough region, and uh, you've seen a lot of these teams uh, kind of along the way, at least in terms of the Midwest region, uh, here at various tournaments throughout the spring. Yeah. Um, the, the South region also is very, very tough. And, and golf is, is strange in a way because – it really just comes down to who plays well that week. And when you have so many good teams at this regional, um, so many you know deserving teams, it just comes down to um, who can put it together when it, when it matters the most. You know, just like any other you know conference or uh, championship event. But we're just looking forward to preparing ourselves and doing everything we can to make sure that we go out there and, and give it everything we've got. Well, coach, thanks for being with us. Uh, best of luck this weekend at the GLIAC Championships. All right, thanks, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports update right after this.